What up, what up, what's up? Of course, it's me, your boy, Richie Rich, at Consumer Prime Support. We back at it again, man, shooting another awesome video. Cause that's what we do. <laughs> I'm adding that on it, I like that. All right, so let's jump on this joint real quick. Now we're gonna focus on this actual range, right? It is the GE Slide-In 30-inch gas range. It has some awesome features on here, man, that we're going to dive into real quick so that you'll be able to see that joint, man, and check this joint out, man. And um, you got to make a decision if you want to join or not, or not. You know what I'm saying? You already know we're going to do the pricing. We're going to do the warranty. We're going to do the functions and the features. We're going to do the parts. And then we're going to give you our overall review. Like what we think of that joint. All right, so let's get into the functions and the features part of this video. All right, so the functions and features of this video, man, we're gonna start off with the broiler igniter that's up top. So if you want to broil, as you can see the video, that's the igniter that's in the back there that allows you to broil, um, broil on there. You have the convection, but we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. So let's focus on the front display. This is how you interact with the appliance. Right, you have your, your traditional cooking mode, you have your bake, your broil, and your warm. All right, you also have your con uh, convection cooking modes as well. Convection bake, convection roast, you can use that. You also have your air fry that you can use. This says air fry cooking mode is designed to produce foods with a crisper exterior than your traditional oven cooking. Mm, 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 mm. You also have your oven probe that monitors internal food temperature and turns the oven off when the food reaches the program temperature. Bruh, all right, clean mode. You have two clean modes on here. You can do your self clean. You can do your steam clean, whichever one you choose. Like, bro, what's, yo, this oven is killing it, right? So uh, you have your timer on and off. You have your control lock. You have cooking options that you can use. It says the cooking options and setting pads open up more detail. It says the cooking options and setting pads open up more detailed menus in the display that allow access to additional functions and cooking modes. Then of course you have your digital display with the time and then you have your numbers that you can choose from when you're setting your temperatures or the time or whatever. You have your cancel button that cancels all operations except the clock and the timer. Then of course you have your start and enter, must be pressed to start any cooking, cleaning, or time functions. All right, so that's what that is there. Let's jump into this joint, man. This joint is awesome, bro. All right, so let's look at the burners. Of course, it's talking from the left, that's the left front, the left rear, and then of course you have an oven light button, that's a knob, you use the knob to turn on the light. <laughs> Never seen that before. That's a little bit different. Um, it's not normally on residential regular ovens. It might be on your 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 high-end appliances like your Vikings and your Thermador, stuff like that. They would have stuff that's a little bit different, but they add this on here to give you that that commercial look, and I kind of like the joint. All right, so that's cool there. So this is your convection. Right, so we can stop it here. This is your convection fan. So when you're doing your convection roast, your convection bake, that's what that's all about there. You know what I mean? You can use that. And all that stuff will be located as well in the owner's manual so you can um, understand how to use either one of those. All right, so we can jump into that. That's the fan that spins in the back. Then of course, from looking at the knobs on the right, you have your, um, your, 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 it's called like a simmer or your, no, the other one is your simmer. So this one is just your, your medium burner. So this is the right, this one here is the, the right rear. Of course, this one is your power burner, which is your, the, the one in the front that you see here. And then of course, this is for the griddle as well. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have the griddle there, you know what I mean? So it's like we showing you now, the one in the back, this is your, this is, so this is the left side, this is your simmer. So this is the left rear, which is your simmer. And then of course you have the triple burner. You can see the picture right here. We're gonna show you that's the triple burner right there that you can see right there. That's cool. You can have that. That's what that is for there. Then of course you have your medium burner that's on the right side. And then of course you have your power burner that's in the front. Then you got your griddle. You know what I'm saying? You can put some uh what's what some sandwiches we used to put back in the day? Grilled cheese sandwiches. I don't know if y'all still make those. You can put some grilled cheese sandwiches on here. I'll probably put some waffles on this joint or pancake. 
I don't know how you put waffle on there without having a waffle maker, but either way, I like waffles more than I like pancake. But you can put whatever you want on it. You see what I'm saying? It's all up to you. No big deal there. So of course this is the door. I don't want to miss the Wi-Fi button connection there. You see it says Wi-Fi and Chef Connect. So that's one of the things I really want to jump into real quick. When we're talking about the Chef Connect, right? Because you can connect this appliance to other appliances. <laughs> Yo, it's 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 crazy, man. It's it's crazy. It's crazy what you can do here. All right, so it says the Chef Connect or Bluetooth. This is a pairing feature for use with other compatible Chef Connect. Enable products like an over-the-range microwave or oven or a range hood. To pair the products to the range, press the setting pad and select Bluetooth. All right, it says select the pair and follow the corresponding instructions included with the Mating Chef Connect Enable product. All right, so you can connect it with other products. Don't forget, just join us also, Remote Start. And it has a Wi-Fi connect with the Remote Start. Um, you can uh, remote start your oven. <laughs> Not a car, it's a stove, man. So you can start it whenever you like, whatever you like. And that's cool right there, and of course, this is the door that we're pulling now. Nice little door with a glass open there. As you can see, this is the rack, and then you have the meat probe that's right here, right? So this is the, the setting that you can actually check the temperature of the inside portion of the meat. So you'll stick the meat probe inside the meat, right? Then you have to insert it, <coughs> excuse me one second, right inside that you can see the connect right here, the silver connect. So that's what's connected to the control and you set the temperature so it's not going to be 350 inside or inside the meat in order to cook it properly. It's going to probably be maybe like 150, 200. So when you create that setting and hit the meat bowl, that will actually cause your oven to, um, to cook the inside of the meat and then once it's done, it's going to let you know like, hey, it's done. You see what I'm saying? So that's going to be good there with the meat bowl, man. So that is cool man i like the meat probe setting there man so that's pretty dope all right so let's keep the joint going of course we inside the cavity of the oven you see the light in the back and of course you have your different um levels that or rack positions that you can put them in all that is going to be in the owner's manual to, to to teach you how to really use the joint so you know which rack level is best or rack position to put your, your food on so it can cook a lot evenly and a lot better, man. So this joint is dope. And then of course you see the oven rack there that you can use. Um, I don't really want to miss the steam joint. I think I might have missed the steam joint. One cup, I don't know if I missed it or not, but either way, don't forget you got the steam. You gotta add one cup on there, all right? That's it. One cup of water right in the middle where it says uh, put it there and that's it. You see what I'm saying? Outside of that, man, we good, we Gucci. This is the door. And that's all the functions and the features with this joint. And uh, you already know how I feel about it through my excitement. You can see it on my face. You can see it on my face, man. So after that, we're going to um, dive into the next thing that we're going to talk about. Now we're going to focus on the warranty aspect of this actual GE sliding gas range. Right. So according to this GE owner's manual that we have here, um, it's the same one that, of course, we're going to have pop up, as you can see right here. All right. It's going to tell you that it has a one-year manufacturer warranty. Outside of that, you're not really getting much. All right. So one of the things I'm starting to notice a lot as far as the gas ranges and electric, electric ranges seem to cover more stuff than the gas ranges do. All right. So your gas range, according to the owner's manual, is going to have the one year from the date of original purchase. Always remember, hold on to your receipts, staple it to the owner's manual, keep it somewhere safe so that, um, you know, if you happen to need it, to show that you did purchase it, you will have that to back you up. As they say, make sure you got your receipt. Show your receipt. Alright, uh, any part of the range will fail due to defect in materials or workmanship during the limited one year manufacturer warranty. GE Appliance will provide free of charge all labor and in-home service to replace the defective part. All right, due to normal workmanship. All right, that's it. Some of the stuff that they would not cover, since it's extremely so, it's simple that you're not really getting much as far as the standard one-year warranty. Some of the stuff it does not cover. Again, you can actually look at this while we're talking about it for yourself. 
service trips to your home to teach you how to use it. Of course, that is a big one that everybody uses when you start to look inside these owner's manual. Um, we can also say, say improper installation or delivery or maintenance, um, stuff like that as well. You wanna make sure it's installed properly um, by someone that is licensed and, and that's a professional and know exactly what they're doing. Again, if they don't know what they're doing, if it's installed incorrectly, that will void your warranty and then they're not coming out to service that you're gonna have to start paying out of pocket. All right, uh, replacements of house fuses or resetting of circuit breakers. All right, so it all depends on your breaker, all that stuff as well, you wanna make sure that is taken care of. All right, uh, incidental, incidental or consequential, consequential damage caused by possible defects with this appliance. All right, so again, not covered by GE. So you just wanna make sure you understand what it is that you're actually paying for because again, these manufacturers are not trying to pay for anything outside of what they're supposed to be paying for. All right, um, another thing that we always stress to try to help you with, noticing the price of this unit, it's about 24 to about 2,800. So we can say roughly almost three grand. Um, you can also buy extended warranty depending on the price and depending on the coverage. Um, I know that I've stressed, if you look in the owner's manual, you can actually see this right here, that GE also offers extended warranties that you can buy. I know we always run to the Geek Squad at Best Buy because they're the only ones that really show it on their website. But if you decide that you want to purchase that, you can do that as well from GE directly. Or you can always go to Best Buy and this is where we're going to actually go so we can show you. All right, so of course on the Greek Geek Squad from looking at this, it's 199 for the three years. It sounds about as always the same range as we do these. Um, five year warranty for um, 299 as well. Um, so it's up to you if you wanna purchase that. Remember, this unit is almost three grand. So if you're spending the extra 300 just to cover you for the next five years, just in case something happened, it's gonna be worth it because again, the average service call, you're probably looking at at least 150 bucks. So that's already half of what you already paid for the five year warranty for someone to come out four years from now. You see what I'm saying? So you're already gonna get your money back when, you, when the service company comes out, that's if it's broken. But common issues that normally goes bad and we'll, we'll let you know that when we're dealing with the part aspects of this uh, video. Um, but right now we're focusing on the warranty. All right, so that's something that you can see there. I also did per pull up the um, the warranty from the Geek Squad. All right, so I did go into it. A couple stuff that they do have on here as well. We can actually allow you to look at it yourself. We're gonna uh, put the link in the description, so you'll be able to read it and you know exactly what it is that you're getting. All right, so you just want to make sure that you are prepared. Um, you can also do monthly financing as well, so that's up to you. But you know, you can do that if you want. But um, outside of that, that is it. As far as the warranty, only a standard one year manufacturer warranty. Um, you can buy extended warranties if you would like. Um, that's, uh, it's up to you. Um, but like I said, it's not that expensive for the extended five year warranty, so you just wanna call them around. All right, cool. All right, so now we're gonna focus on the parts aspect of this video. How much is it gonna cost you um, to have a service technician come out? Because it is gonna happen. <laughs> Appliances only last between five to 10 years. There's common issues that happens all the time. So you're gonna have to pay for this joint. So let's fact, let's create a scenario that you don't have a warranty, right? Manufacturer's warrant is ran out. You didn't get the extended warranty because you fellas though, man, you didn't need it. You're fine, you're good. Okay, you do have that right to choose. But let's factor this in. Five years later, um, your igniter goes bad, your control board is shorted out. It's not heating up. Um, you have to have a technician to come out to calibrate the temperature. Um, the unit is completely dead. Um, if you turn on the right burner, it's not igniting. It's not coming on fast enough. It's, it's pretty slow, or it's probably not even coming in or coming on at all. So you're gonna have to figure out how much this joint costs, and this is where we come in to try to even give you an idea of how much you will possibly pay depending on the price of that part. All right. Don't forget. All this is estimate, right? So this is not nothing concrete. We're just giving you our professional opinion and this is just um, an estimate as well. All right, so just keep that in mind. All right, so let's get this thing going so that you'll be able to see how much it costs for the actual part.
All right, so let's, the first video that the first image that we'll see, of course, we're looking at the LP conversion kit. All right, so that's the conversion kit that allows you to switch from natural gas to LP gas. All right, so if you have an LP gas, that's gas that's sitting outside either in a tank because of the area that you live in, the county or the city doesn't provide gas, you're gonna have to pay for it outside, pay it for yourself. Normally when you purchase a range or any gas um, appliance, it comes natural, all right? But you will have to have a technician come out if you have LP to convert it over to LP, all right? So you can have a natural gas set up and you have LP tank out there, you try to use it. It's not gonna work. Your flames are gonna be like this big and it's gonna burn your pots and they're gonna be charcoal black, all right? So you're gonna have the right professional out so that they'll be able to help you, all right? And that's what it's all about. So the conversion kit comes with it, but if you happen to lose it, it's about $22.82. All right, so that's it. Um, that's one, you also have another one that's a high uh, altitude LP conversion kit, depending on which one it is that you need as well. Um, that's $75.37 if you happen to need that conversion kit, all right? Um, you have a range high altitude and natural gas conversion kit. So again, this, you're dealing with something that a professional needs to help you with. So again, you're looking at roughly the, pi the prices are extremely cheap and extremely affordable right now for some of these stuff that we just looked at. And then of course you got to factor in labor. And this is if you decide to get the parts yourself and it's not a markup, there's no taxes added to it. So you're going to have to keep that in mind. All right. Um, we got the in inject. All right, so the inject, that's number 10. So if you look at the other screen here, it's roughly right above here. You can see it, it's about 10. That's where the actual burner sits in. We normally try to order everything as an assembly because it's a lot easier. But if you have to order it individually, because over time what can happen is from you using it and um, your, your, your grease or your water spills inside of it, it deteriorates it and sometimes it almost weld itself to the actual burner. So it's difficult to get it off. So normally you'll probably order the inject and the burner assembly, which is number 22 that you can see here. We're getting to the price of that because it's difficult for the, the nut, which is number four, right? The range nut that you can see there, it's sometimes hard to get off. So instead of just ordering just that particular piece, which could be pretty cheap as you can see, but for us to get it done and make, it, make sure it's done the, the first time we get there, or the second time because we have to order the part and come back out, then of course we want to make sure we order that part, all right? So that's cool there. So number 12, we're looking at the harness, all right? So this is the switch harness. This go bad, I wouldn't say a lot, but it's a common issue that does happen, right? So what can happen to it is it can short out and burn out. Um, there's time when stuff spills over, water gets inside of it. So if you notice that water gets inside of it, please just not, don't turn the, the, the range on at least for a couple hours so that that water can dry if it's, some, if, if it's a space where it's difficult to get to. Because of course, electricity does not like water. So you wanna make sure if this is what you're gonna do, just let it sit for a little bit, allow it to dry up, then you can actually try attempt to use it again, all right? So you're looking at that part is $78.15. So it's not bad, you know what I mean? It's in a reasonable price, but they do short out. And one way you can tell is if you turn one of the igniters on and it doesn't light, um, if you turn the knob either on all of them, when you turn all of, all of them on, it doesn't ignite. You don't hear it clicking. So you'll be able to just hear the gas coming out, but it does not ignite. All right, so that's the sign there. Or you can see it sparking coming through there or burning smell. Typical stuff like that to look for, all right? So that's cool. Um, of course, you have your burners and everything else. Uh, manifold, pipe assembly. Um, that's number what? Let me see, number 15. So I'm trying to ask you if you can find that. That's number 15. Um, yeah, so stuff like that doesn't really normally go with bad, man. Um, those are not really common issues, so we're not gonna really focus on that. This is what the orf orifice looks like. So when I was telling you about the, um, the conversion kit, the one that says natural will have an N on it, and if it's LP, it'll have L, a L on it to let you know the difference between the two, all right? So that's where the gas shoot out. 
So each individual individual orifice has a hole in it. So one could be bigger, one could be smaller, and that um, is what determines how much gas come out and how much um, how big the flames are. So that can also be clogged up as well. So you can use at times like a little toothpick just to stick it in there. You got to be super careful though. All right, um, you just got to use a toothpick, clean it out a little bit. Uh, making sure there's nothing spilled in there that is um, that the air, that the gas is able to come out and you can do stuff like that All right So that's cool. All right, let's go into something else that normally goes bad um, You have your burner valves that's number 56 All right, so that's let me see what we got on this page 56 right here. You can see I don't know. Yeah, it's not Not allowing it to get any bigger than what you see there. So unfortunately, that's what we're doing Oh, there we go. Great. User error. It's me. All right. So number 56, you can see these are the burner valves that you actually turn. They can actually break. All right. I've had customers where they actually broken off and the gas just keeps coming out the oven. Once that happens, you can't use it. All right. You're going to have to unplug the unit, turn the gas off because you cannot use it with that. Um, another thing you can do if it's hard to turn, call the service technician to come out. It's best for you to leave it where you're not able to turn it and get it replaced then for you to attempt to use it or turn it and it breaks and now you can't use the oven at all. Then you gotta wait for somebody to come out, order the parts, come back out, put the parts in. Not all parts are easy to get anymore. It's extremely difficult to get parts right now so you wanna keep that in mind as you use it. But that part is $28.17. Depending on which one though, so they have different ones. Of course you got 59, 56, 58. Um, you got 56 right here. Um, 59 you're looking at that's 122 right 122 76 so that's already almost 200 bucks for that part and that's not even including markup then you got to pay for labor so see that the extended warranty that you already purchased you already paid your money for it already easy all right so just keep that in mind as you continue to use that all right so there's different ones that cost a lot more money um, 57 let's go into 57 over here on this side you can see that uh, 57 costs 114.08. All right, so like I said, man, they're pretty expensive, man. So you just want to keep that in mind as you um, continue to do that. Um, let's see what else we have. We have a rotary switch, 74. What number that is? Uh, that's number 60, right? So that's right near, right there, number 60. That's the switch there. That's about 74 bucks and 23 cents. All right, so you can see exactly what it is that I'm looking at. Um, they have number 67, which is the dual oven burner assembly. Um, that's number 67. I'm hoping that I can find that joint real quick. Um, all right, so this is right here. That's the whole assembly. The dot goes around, so you can see the whole assembly. That's $35.49. All right, see how easy that is? Just replace the whole thing. Simpler, easier. Not, not worth the headache, man. Um, the gas manifold number 99, that's $119.11. Um, I recently had a customer where that was actually leaking and she needed the manifold to be replaced because what was happening is it was constantly leaking gas while she was using it. So as soon as she turned it on, flames just came out everywhere. And of course she wasn't happy about it and she didn't want to get it fixed because I understand, you know what I mean? Um, when, you're, when you experience something like that, it's difficult for you to reset your mind as if it didn't happen so that you can actually be comfortable with using it again. So. I understand it happens all right um, so now we're gonna go into the range oven burner igniter man this is really cheap all right and we got the gas valve so let's see what we got the gas valve is 214 all right so the range gas valve and regulator assembly so this is where the gas comes in from um, outside it gets connected to the oven then it has a regulator that actually breaks down the gas because the gas is coming in from the gas company. It's, it's, the force is too strong, so you have to have a regulator to actually break it down so that the oven, so that the oven will be able to distribute it through, um, through the different portions, either on the top or inside the oven so that you can cook, either one of the two, all right? So that gas valve and regulator is 178. So right now that part is like 200. Again, the service company come out, for example, it's going to be more than 200 bucks. You're looking at 250. You might even look closely almost 300. Then you got to factor in labor. If the labor was 100 and then you're looking at a part that's almost 300, that's already 400. That's almost four or 500. Already just off of one part if that part goes bad because you never know what part's going to go bad. 
all right all right so that's something there so you have your oven igniter both of these igniters is really cheap igniters really go bad pretty quickly um because again once you it's like a light bulb you constantly keep using it the more you use it even when you're self-cleaning remember you know what i mean self-cleaning can get up to a thousand degrees that's going to cause you cause your igniter to to, uh, to wear down over time and then it could become weak and then when it becomes weak some of the symptoms that you can actually look for is you're gonna you're gonna smell gas right because it's gonna take forever to preheat right so you can smell gas when it comes on because the igniter will glow but it's not strong enough to light right away um, also you'll be able to your preheat cycles take forever it's gonna be so much longer you'll be like man it's a half an hour and this joint ain't preheat yet another sign there um, so there's a couple things or it might not come on at all stuff like that so you just want to keep that in mind as you continue to um, um, pay attention to the to the oven and use it um, you know that those parts typically uh, tend to go bad pretty often all right so the igniter is one for the um, is 5704 that's number 217 that's the bait you have your broiler which is 5432 you're not going to spend 54 dollars for any igniter for a service company to come out it's going to be at least 100 bucks and i'm just being upfront and honest with you you know what i'm saying you're not paying that um you have your blower um blower wheel or your blower motor that's 910 8104 that typically don't go bad either way so you, you should be fine as far as that no issues really there all right so again let's move to something else you also have your convection so we can dive into that real quick so you can actually see the pictures of the convection all right so we want to scroll down a little bit let's see what we got with the convection um because i want to show you both all right so yeah let me see what we got here open up it see that all right so you got your motor 292 that's just the heating element all right so the convection has a heating element that's 70 75 dollars and 91 cents so roughly about 100 bucks you got your blade which is 721 that can actually either break or start to rattle make noises that's 19 dollars and 18 cents um, let's see how much the motor is. That's 726. So um, that's here you go right here. Seventy dollars and ninety-nine cents. Again, not that expensive for that part. All right. So that's the convection. If you happen to need that part, super duper duper inexpensive. All right. So that's cool. The body of the joint. Um, to be honest with you, man, you should be good not really too many issues with that um as far as the body of the stove um oh yeah i guess we can go to this real quick just get on just look at a couple of the uh simple parts that might go bad on there all right let's get it oh oh yeah and your oven sensor i forgot that hopefully you can see that on here um it's 13 dollars and 76 cents all right, so I'm hoping this will change. But it's not showing me the body though. Uh, spark module, seventeen dollars and thirty-five cents. So you can still see it. Um, oh yeah, so it's on the right page. It's on the right page. Spark module, of course, that's seventeen dollars and thirty-five cents. This is what allows the cooktop to spark when you turn it, and it says light. This is your spark module. That can go bad where when you turn it to light. You don't hear anything so the switch can do that and a spark module could do that those two are common parts that normally goes bad all right so that's 17 dollars 35 cents oh yeah the oven sensor i think we did that already all right so that's 13 dollars 76 cents you're not spending that unless you buy that yourself for 13 dollars 76 cents that ain't happening <laughs> um your lights um if it's um LED lights is twenty dollars and two cents if you need a light. All right, so that's cool there. Um, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Um, switch is two thirty three, and let's look at the switch real quick. Um, that's door switch is ten dollars and thirty one cents. I missed that when I was looking at the light. And number ninety one is the gasket. All right, so you got to be careful with the gasket as well. Um, no, that's not 91. 
That's 318. My bad. Watch me watch me do this real quick. I don't want to mess up nobody's eyes. Alright, that's not really giving me much of 318. That's it. It's stuck. That's it. Yeah, so. We have to find you gasket. You know, you'll be able to find that. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Alright, let's see what we got for this control, man. Alright, let's see, let's see. The knob! Jesus, Christmas, one knob! Man, y'all, y'all expensive out here. One knob, number two. <laughs> Alright, one knob. You're looking at $48.36 for the knob. Yo, that is an expensive knob. And imagine if you gotta replace, you got six knobs on here. You gotta replace six knobs. They might be different as far as prices, so we'll check that out. Um, but it's $48.36 a piece for that knob. Again, always search around. It's not always the that price, but you can search around for it. Um, let's see what else. We have the stainless steel. That's number five. Um, that's $113.31 if you happen to need that. The main top, which is here, which is the range top. This is the range top here. That's $189.28 uh, if you need that. If that was to, they don't normally go bad, but you know, cosmetics reasons, people get stuff replaced. If you want to do that, it's up to you, but you won't pay. Um, the griddle, which is 113 and 115. Them joints, one is 63.85. That's the, the one on the outside. The one in the middle, that's 103.15. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, that joint is high. Alright, it's not really showing me much on here, man. Let me see if I could get into this screen. Yeah, it's not really showing me much. Other than that. Yeah, it's not really showing me much. I thought it would have showed me the control, man. Oh, there we go. About time, about time. All right, let's get it, let's get it. I was about to jump on y'all real quick. It says the glass, 136 glass and touch board assembly. Right now that control board is no longer available. This is on Sears website though. Doesn't mean it's no longer available for GE. You can search around. Uh, we might have to copy and paste to see if we can find it somewhere else. To see if it's available, let's see. Go with your boy as we knock this joint out, see where we at. See if this part is available anywhere else. Uh, no. No, it's not. <laughs> Alright, let me just Google it. Alright, GE appliance part. Ah, la, 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 la. 122.50. Um, so that's the new part number has been converted over. So you can actually see that it's available. That's just for the. Um, the glass or the touch screen or everything else that you touch there, alright? That's it, cool. Alright, so let's get back to what we got. Um, yeah, so roughly that's it. I mean, as you can see, most of these... Um, alright, so we're going to just do it this way so that you can actually see it. Um, just had some issues trying to find this joint, but I'm glad we were able to find it. Alright, so now we'll be able to show you exactly where we left off at, at the control board. So let's see how much this is going to cost if you decide that you want to get it fixed, how much it would be. Um, I know we talked about the glass and touch board is no longer available as well. So you do have the burners that you can buy. Those are extremely um, affordable um, as you can see as well. Not that expensive, really cheap, really, really cheap. All right, so knobs, you're looking at 1276, depending on which one. Certain ones is 48, 36, and that's all the parts there. All right, so and let's look at the door. Normally the door is pretty good. Um, glass or hinges might be worn out, right? So if you happen to need a door, you can actually pay for that. Um, door hinge is 2476, really cheap. Um, um, not a lot of issues there if you need the hinge glass and panel and door assembly that's number 314 let's see how that looks on here um, that's the glass 
314 right now it seems no longer available all right it doesn't mean it's no longer available it's just no longer available on this site all right so you got the glass that you can purchase normally if you purchase in the door it comes uh, piece by piece so you might have to buy or pick out whatever piece you might need and just go ahead and purchase it that way um, it looks like this is the door handle the stainless steel door is hundred dollars for the handle one is 9708 so just be careful with the door handle because it ain't a cheap door handle as you can see um, outside of that that's everything else man so again this is just the end of the parts video and we are out as far as that we're gonna move on to something else all right so now we're gonna focus on the price portion of this video all right so if you decide that you want to purchase this unit how much is it going to cost you right because of course you got to spend some money for this joint uh, one is a ge product um it looks like it's just a standard ge it's not a ge profile it's not a ge monogram it's not a ge cafe but either way well i'm sorry it is a ge profile so it's a notch above a standard or regular ge so with it being a ge profile you're going to have to pay some money just for the name brand that it has on here as well all right, so let's look at the price for this unit if you decide that you want to purchase this 30 inch gas range. Uh, the price right now just for the fingerprint resistant stainless steel because it has two colors, you're looking at about $2,474, all right? You are saving about 10% depending on where you are. They have special buys that you can actually purchase as well. Um, right now they're giving you $275 off, so that's why they knock it down to about $2,000 thousand four hundred and seventy four dollars all right so um, it has a lot of functions and features on here that is extremely intriguing I'm sure um, but as far as the price on the Home Depot website that's how much it would be and of course they also have the fingerprint resistive black stainless steel so if you want to get that color you're looking at about two thousand five hundred and nineteen dollars right so depending on the color, depending on how much you actually pay as far as the price and how much this thing would cost. All right, so that's just where we are. All right, let's go to another site real quick. All right, so now I'm on Lowe's. Uh, Lowe's is a little bit different. Um, they're charging you about 2,749. And this one is just the stainless steel. So they don't actually have um, a different color. Um, the one color that they have is what they have and that's it. You're not getting anything more, you're not getting anything extra. So right now at Lowe's, it's about $2,749. All right, so um, nothing special there. All right, so let's go into the Best Buy, right? So Best Buy, not too different from Lowe's as far as the pricing. Um, you're looking at $2,749. So roughly, um, it just looks like this unit is gonna be pretty expensive. One, like I stated before, initially, it's a GE profile, so it's a little bit uh, a notch above a standard GE, so you're gonna have to pay for that. All right, so that's that's in the high end portion of what the GE is. It's not the highest of the highest, but it's right below the bottom, so you're gonna have to pay for that. All right, so you're looking at 2,749 bucks. All right, they don't have any other color, um, and that's another thing there. Um, GE themselves, if you decide that you want to go to that site, you're looking at 2,749 dollars. All right not a lot of difference there in the price so you're looking at roughly probably about three grand including taxes you know you're really right there close to spending about three grand um, outside of that that's how much this actual uh, range will cost and that's how much you're going to pay it's three grand all right so hope you like it All right, so now we're gonna dive into our overall review. You know what I'm saying? At Consumer Plans Report. So of course you already know if you've been with us for a long time, man, we've been, we tally up the, um, the grade by starting with five being the highest and one being the lowest. And we get an overall grade and of course then we add the grade up and then we give you our overall review. You know what I'm saying? Our grade, so you can get an A, B, C, D or an F. Yeah, some of, some of these appliances are going to start getting some Fs, man. Um, so let's jump into this real quick when we're focusing on the actual parts. When we did the parts and look at a lot of the common issues that typically goes bad for this particular GE 
um, gas range, <clears throat> the parts are inexpensive. So we kind of like the parts, the price that you pay for a lot of parts, they're not expensive, they're really affordable. So as far as the grade that we're gonna give for the parts, we're gonna give it a five because we it is extremely affordable. We really, really like it. And outside of the common issues that normally go bad, an igniter, um, either the bake one or the broil, um, or your surface igniter, or maybe your switches, something like that. Outside of that, GE ranges are pretty are pretty good. Um, I really I rarely replace the control boards on them. So, you know, outside of that, you know, it's it's a really good um, grade as far as a five. All right, let's talk about the warranty. Man, you talking about warranty. <clears throat> Again, gas ranges, you get a standard one year manufacturer warranty. Nothing extra, nothing less. Ain't much to really talk about. Outside of that, that's it. So you're gonna get a three. Uno, dos, tres. Three, that's it. All right, let's talk about the price. Man, I got a couple joints I'm gonna show you guys as you can see. The price for this unit when we talked up, when we looked it up is about 2,500 to about 2,700, almost three grand. So to be honest with you, I know it's a GE profile and it's a little bit a notch above a standard GE. But as you can see when we're showing you, it's a couple of appliances that does a lot of the same things, um, have a lot of the same features, and it's a little bit cheaper. So I'm gonna go with as far as the price of the parts, the price is two. We're gonna give this a two because it's too high. Yeah, yeah, two because it's too high. So we're gonna give you a two. So we're gonna give you that. So we can jump into the functions and the features. Man, functions and the features on this joint, of course, with the air fry. We already know, man, we live in a time and age where people just trying to eat more healthier. So instead of frying in a lot of grease, you got the air fry that you can use, which is awesome there. You have the triple burner, which is the, the one on the left that you can use. You can simmer, you can turn it down to three different phases, and you have your big power burner that's there as well. You have your probe that you can use. One of the great thing I like about the functions and features is that you can connect it to other appliances. You can connect to a range hood, you can connect to a microwave. As long as they're compatible, it's called the Chef Connect. I think that's pretty awesome, I like that there. Of course, you got the remote start and you can communicate with the app as well. I really like the functions, I really like the features that you have on this range. So the functions and features, as you can see, we won't give it a five because I think it's, a, it's extremely outstanding and we love it. All right, so that's cool there. So let's go over everything that we accumulated and find out what the score is, all right? As far as the parts, we give it a five. Functions and features, we give it a five. Uh, warranty, we give it a three. And the, part, and the price, we give it a two. So the overall grade is about 15. We divide it by four, you're looking at a 3.75. So we're gonna give it a C. I'm gonna have to learn how to say C in Spanish. C, all right, so that's the overall grade. We like a lot of the the, 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 the functions and the features we really love. Um, the warranty is the standard stuff, you know what I mean? Outside of that, the parts is pretty good. So it does have some good things on there that I really, really like, but it's not one of the best one on the market. There's different ones, that's, there's one that I'm thinking about that's a little bit better than that, and we're gonna do a review on that, we're gonna show you that as well, but of course this grade, we're gonna give it a C. All right, don't forget, it's me, your boy, Richie Rich, at Consumer Plus Report. You help me, I help you, we both help each other. All right, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, my channel man. H hit the alert, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, you know what I'm saying? And of course, leave a comment if you have any questions or any appliance you want us to review. Shoot us an email, our email is gonna be located in the description box. Let us know what's up, it's cool, it's me, your boy, Richie Rich, and I am out. Till next time, man, peace.